good practice in, in uh, development assistance. And uh, some of those who brought it by Sarah in the description of the way that the Fast Track Initiative is designed to work, aligned with country program, harmonizing uh, development assistance, um, managing for results, being accountable, mutually accountable, speaking not only to activities, but to what we are achieving with, with those activities, um, and to putting the country in the driver's seat to the extent possible. CETA has tried to go down that route to a certain extent, Canada has. Um, but obviously we have a long way to go. But I wanted to say that this is a, one of the broader broader components of the, of the global governance structure which, uh, within which we fit. Um, Karen spoke to the fact that we do not, in terms of supporting the needs of children in conflict-affected states and the development del delivery of humanitarian assistance, Karen spoke, to, thanks, Karen spoke to the fact that we don't put, CETA says, we don't consider education one of the first responses and ask our, our partners to say, hey, wait a minute, you have to ask us for that. That is, once again, beyond CETA, beyond Canada, there is a way of our humanitarian assistance is determined by a larger governance structure. And Canada doesn't say, in a crisis situation, humanitarian assistance situation. We will help you determine what you need to be, what you think needs to be done, but rather to respond. So I'm not sure how we would do that differently without changing the larger, the larger uh, uh, agreement system. But maybe you could speak to that. Um, we could be an advocate for We could be an system. Yeah. Yeah. We know that education is 20% less likely to be funded in emergency call, calls for emergency appeals than any other of the top five sectors. So it's, it looks to you know, act as an advocate on this issue, I think. But anyway, you, you know uh, what's playing out there. It's a, a different, I, I agree with you, it's a different kind of uh, approach to any manager in However, as uh, I think I have to say hats off to some of the children who um, talk in terms of motivation, I want them to use motivation as much as leadership. CSO, office CSOs have made a real mind shift in the way we spend our education dollars. Uh, all those who worked around the Rewrite the Future campaign have been very uh, influential and very effective in call calling donors to address the needs of children and and, and systems in, in fragile and uh, conflict affected states. Um, but it remains a challenge, and it's on every G8 agenda that once again, and every every global agenda, how do we address the needs of, of children in schools in conflict affected states? And in fact, that brings me to something I wanted to raise. Uh, in the, as we discuss the new, anything new that's done with similar to the Fast Track Initiative or within the Fast Track Initiative, there's going to continue to be a challenge and a tension between performance and need. And in, in fragile states particularly so, we have been supporting good performers. We say, please do solid plans and we will, we will invest in them to the extent possible. Need, need is the other component of that. What happens if they don't have the capacity, if the country is not in a position to have the data collection, collecting the ministries, the, EM, the MS, EMSIS systems, the, all the policy analysts to write the beautiful strategy and all the systems in place in order to, to demonstrate what we consider to be good performance. That is the need aspect. You know, the balance, the tension between rewarding performance and, and supporting need is a constant one the donors and are still uh, face every time they consider a, an investment. And the Fast Track Initiative has had to deal with that uh, consistently in the last period of time. And I would hope that the global, whatever happens next, will be able to continue to, to engage in that dialogue and perhaps that, that shed some light on that. There's been a lot of decision about how, discussion about whether to allocate a certain amount for this or not. But, but that's a tension. just two or three things about um, good donor behavior and 
to support governance the best we could. Um, I've mentioned aligning our support with national systems, harmonizing with, with other donors, and we are delighted to hear that the U.S. is interested in, in um, multilateral approaches and discussing and dialoguing with other donors. That's very, very encouraging. Um, the one thing that is a challenge to, to donors in, in um, responding to need and also contributing to good governance is, is, our, uh, is our role is providing technical support. And uh, I'm coming to an end here. What I've been hearing in some of the dialogues that I participate in is the, the fact that there are not very many of this kind of group of people. There, there are actually fewer technical, technical education people walking around doing this, trying to do this kind of work. There's not uh, the size of the technical groups within the World Bank, within the USAID, within CEDA, within <coughs> agency is shrinking. And there's not necessarily, if, if uh, donors do not contribute to uh, the expansion of universities and other other higher levels of higher education uh, broadly to, to allow for lots of, lots of uh, technical people to develop within our country partners, then that resource is not available either. So there's the question, as we, uh, there's a question of technical capacity and of specialized capacity and how we are going to contribute, provide that in a, a effective way which does not come across as a, as a um, tide, and also support the authentic development of what exactly is needed at the country level to, to respond to the more and more sophisticated questions, education questions and governance questions, and financing of education questions, and economic analysis of education systems, and all the linkages to the, the other sectors. That whole question of capacity and knowledge and expertise is something which I think is being asked, um, is, is challenging, and to do, to respond to that in a good, in a, in a way which uh, contributes to a very, in a good governance way, in an aid effective way. Um, I'm coming to the end of the brilliant comments that I have thought of. Um, the one other thing that I did want to say was that um, we were challenged about a year and a half ago to, to by someone who's actually the author of the, of the first paper we wrote by the Global Education Fund, Jim Sperling. He said, well, when we were saying, oh, this isn't working, this eight architecture thing just isn't working, there are problems with the FTI, and the, the time UNICEF and the bank were having a bit of a bun fight, and there was this going on, well, you created the eight architecture, you being donors and developing country um, partners, you created this. You have the potential to change it. It's not something that we've arrived with. It's, it can be moved. And I think that we should take that to heart if you're out and say, well, yeah, what is, in which way can we influence this to make a change and not keep it just because this is the way it is now. Um, and the, on the same, in the same way, I think that um, these donors and as academics and CSO partners need to be really flexible, particularly in response to, to the current situation. Um, I'll stop with Jeffrey Sachs who said, you know, this is such an unprecedented situation right now. The things I was lecturing on two years ago have proven not to be founded in reality anymore. I don't understand what's happening. I can't explain it. The way I run it, the textbooks that I was writing, they don't make sense anymore. I was wrong. So he was saying, we are going to have to really be flexible and to function, as we were called to this morning, to be really clear about the context in which we're working and to do our best to do our homework, to understand the context and be in a position to respond. Now that's where organizations and agencies like CEDA do have a problem because the world is moving faster than we are. And that we do have a number of, of masters to respond to and to, to uh, most of them are around the table, those of you who pay taxes in Canada. We look to you for leadership and being able to defend, but I do, I hope that we will continue
continue to be flexible in our ability to respond to. 